Um, next, we're pretty much ready uh, to apply the Quicksilver and the gold. So what we'll do is we'll do Quicksilver over the black and white, and then I'll jump over to the gold, and we'll do the same thing. We'll do it over the black and over the white, so you can kind of see the difference on what that ground coat does for the final look. Um, this product, both the Quicksilver and the gold, shake these really well, and these are sprayed right out of the bottle. So no reduction, right out of the bottle. Uh, a little goes a long way. And typically, I'm at the higher end of my air pressure. So for this, we'll use the TH2. Again, um, I'm going to be right around 45 PSI with this, which is a little bit higher than I normally spray it. Um, and you want to be really mindful with your application technique. This product is kind of designed to dry on contact. And you want to give enough time in between coats to really let the product, again, dehydrate and, and make sure it's really dry. The last thing you want to do is a wet application. So really fine coats and building up probably four to five, maybe five maximum, depending on how it looks. Uh, four is kind of the sweet spot. So, and, and again, it's just a light application. That's actually why this is a great uh, tool to apply this. This is a, a TH2, a smaller needle. It's a point six, I believe, um, or point seven. Um, so a little bit higher air pressure. You really want to atomize that product. You want it to almost be dry to the touch as you're spraying it. So we're going to get the booth running, and we'll start spraying some chrome. Okay, guys, it's the first coat over the black. You can see I'm further away than I typically would be when I'm spraying. And you're really just trying to nurse this on. You're still being as even as possible, but really gentle with your application. I do not want this to look wet at all. That was basically one coat right there. So super, super ginger with how you apply this. We'll go on to the white. Again, just making sure I get all my edges. And that's it. It doesn't really look like much, but that is one coat. So I'll let this dry up, and we'll be back for coat number two. All right, guys, we're back. Coat number one is totally dry. And again, I sound like a broken record, but I say this in all the videos. The best result you're going to get with all our paints, including uh, the Quicksilver and the gold, it's got to be totally dry to the touch. I don't want to touch this nail, but I'll touch down here. Totally dry. Not sticky, not totally dry. Uh, so you can see I was super ginger with my application, really light, slowly building it up. You're not spraying this like you would a, a sealer or your base coat color or clear coat. It's, it's slowly building up the color. So I'm going to go ahead and do coat number two. Very light on my trigger. Just kind of almost putting it on like a guide coat. So slowly filling in that area. If you over apply this, What'll happen is it'll just kind of, kind of look like glorified silver. Or what'll happen is if you overapply, really, really overapply, it'll run. So again, I'd rather see an extra coat, extremely light, than a heavy, heavy coat trying to get that effect. The application over the white is the exact same way, just really, really light. So we'll let that dry up, we'll come back, put the last coat on, and then we'll do the application of the gold, which is actually the same exact way, it's just gold. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right guys, we are back. Coat number two is totally dry on both black and the white. And uh, now this is gonna be coat number three, and this is kind of the deciding factor of how much further we'll go. We'll probably do four, just because we are putting it on really light. And again, light is the key. So this is coat number three. not doing anything different. I am applying it the exact same way. Extremely light on my trigger pull. I'm like not even a half trigger. This is just extremely light. Just kind of dusting this on, filling in the dark spots if I see any. That's it. So this is over the white. Same way. Nice and even. Like I mentioned before, I'd rather have to go back and do a fourth coat if I think it's necessary, even a half coat, just to kind of dust it on and make it even, then look at it and regret putting that last coat on. So 
I can't stress it enough, that's the key to applying this. And you can see, I mean, my trigger pull is literally like that. I'm barely even moving my finger. So that's it, third coat. We'll let that set up. We'll take a look, see what we think. And if we want to do a fourth, we'll do a fourth, but we'll kind of see what it looks like once it's dry. So we'll be back and we'll be spraying uh, another coat of gold or uh, the chrome, or we'll do the gold. All right, guys, welcome back. I know we said we were going to kind of investigate or make up our mind in terms of three and four coats. So this is three coats over the white and over the black, totally dry. And uh, I'm digging how that looks. So we're going to leave it at three coats. Again, it's kind of all dependent upon how you're spraying, how it's applied, the size of the project that you're doing. So I'm digging the three coats. It's got a nice even look to it. And uh, the reflectivity is there. Now, the, the key is too, is uh, one thing I want to touch on before we move on to the goal, that's what we're gonna spray next. This will actually get brighter. It will increase in brightness as it dries. So if you have that ability to, like the, the premium would be two days, 48 hours. After 48 hours, it really brightens up at least 24 hours. So you guys are familiar, maybe if you, if you saw the Silver Surfer video that we did, it was a big full-size Silver Surfer figure. Uh, we waited two days before we went after that with clear and that, just to achieve that maximum brightness to really let this kind of, as it dehydrates, as it dries, it, it actually does brighten up. So enough of that. Got my gold chrome in the gun ready to go. This is the exact same thing like I mentioned before. It's right out of the bottle, ready to go. So same gun, same air pressure, same everything, same spray technique. It's just a different color. So we're going to go ahead. I'll do it over the white first and then we'll do the black. And again, guys, the way, what I mentioned earlier, this is kind of the only time I recommend spraying this far away. And it's kind of more of a, a rapid hand movement, kind of that sword fight spray, just to get it nice and even. So that's it, coat number one. We'll let this dry up about 10 minutes and we'll come back and put on coat number two. Hey guys, welcome back. Coat number one is dry over the black and over the white. And again, it doesn't look like much, but this is, the process, I can't stress that enough. Light coats, even coats, and uh, build it up. So we're gonna go ahead and do coat number two. and then over the black. So again, we'll let this dry up another 10 minutes. We'll come back and do our third coat. And uh, we'll see you in 10 minutes. All right, welcome back. Coat number two is dry. We're gonna go ahead and do coat number three, and I think we're gonna kind of do the same thing uh, that we, we talked about with the Quicksilver, where we'll kind of assess that after the third coat and see if a fourth is necessary. But again, light coats, can't stress that enough. That's what we're talking about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do coat number three. You'll see, after it really didn't look like much of anything, that third coat really starts to fill in any of those little voids. So that's looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and do it all over the black. The reason that we say working in light coats is you kinda want a small amount of that base coat color, whether it's the high gloss white or the high gloss black, to show through on a small scale and that's gonna kind of give you that reflection on the flake, the particle that's, that's creating that metallic look or that, that chrome look. So that looks pretty good too. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry up. We'll take a good look at it and uh, we'll make a decision if we're gonna do four coats or keep it at three. So we'll see you guys in a minute. All right guys, welcome back. We, uh, I opted to do a fourth coat of the gold over just to really clean that up and 
bright in that up. Um, so we did four coats over the black and the white for the gold, and we did three coats over the black and the white for the Quicksilver. So these are totally dry. Uh, and while we have, I have other samples that are, are sitting aside as well, so I figured at this time, before we clear these, we'll uh, go into what I mentioned earlier about doing an anodized candy, effect, creating that anodized candy. So uh, for this, we'll do Carib Blue candy. I like blue, and uh, I think it's gonna be cool over the gold because it's gonna kind of bring it more of like an aqua color, more of a teal color, and uh, over the, the silver, it's gonna obviously look like bright blue. So the, the trick again for this is to make sure your, your base coat, in this case the gold or the chrome, again are really, really dry. So overnight is preferred. If you can wait two days, like I mentioned earlier, it's even better. Just because that continually gets brighter. So dry time is your friend. If, if you're not sure, wait longer. It's not going to hurt you in the long run. It's going to give you a better result. So real quick off camera. I have mixed up some of our carob blue candy. So if you guys are familiar with our other candy videos, we have a bunch of them out there. I kind of talk about mixing ratios and, and application and whatnot. Um, six to one is typically my go-to. And when I say six to one, I mean six parts of our 4050, our UVLS gloss 4050, that's our candy carrier, uh, to one part candy. But that's kind of my general rule of thumb. For this application, because we're trying to kind of build up a little bit lighter of a coat to create that anodized effect, I want it a little weaker in terms of the concentration of candy, so I opted to go eight to one. And you can go as, as thin as you want, I mean, in terms of you almost doubling. If six to one is what I'm saying, you can go 12 to one. And again, that first number, that's that 12, or in this case, the eight, is the 4050, not the candy. So it's eight parts 4050 to one part candy. And uh, once you kind of exceed that six to one, which is, again, my standard, but kind of my benchmark, um, you might have to add a little bit more reducer because now you have six to one, typically sprays really well right out of the spray gun without reduction, depending on where you're doing. Smaller gun, you might have to add a splash, like 5%, but six to one kind of sprays really nice without any reduction. Um, but as you start moving away from that concentration of candy and having more 40-50, the 40-50 is thicker than the candy, so you might have to add five, five to 10% reduction depending on what your ratio is. So the same thing, when you mix that, mix it up really well, add your reducer, let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes, before you start to spray, get it loaded, which I have it loaded in my gun, and we're gonna go ahead and spray a couple coats. So we'll start with one coat on each, and then uh, you guys can see what that looks like. Um, when you're spraying candies, you wanna be a nice, even overlap, uh, about 75% overlap, and you wanna make sure your gun is constantly congruent with the shape that you're spraying, right? So you don't wanna spray, if this is like your flat edge, you don't wanna spray like this or spray like this. You kinda of wanna keep it really, really parallel to the surface that you're spraying. So you want, it, that evenness is key. So here we go, this is code number one over the Quicksilver that's over black. don't want to dry spray this, you want just a nice even medium wet coat of paint as well. Any kind of stipple is going to be magnified by that chrome. So that's coat number one, you can see already that looks pretty cool. And that's the reasoning behind going lighter with that concentration. I don't want to darken this right up, you're going to kind of lose that metallic effect, you're going to lose that anodized effect. So. Even at, at 8 to 1, I could probably, like I mentioned earlier, step it up and go 12 to 1 to really thin this out and almost just tint it where, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, maybe two coats might be the, the end for these guys because I'm really digging how that looks. So over gold, it's going to look totally different. It's going to be cool. You can really see that teal color. We actually have a teal in our line. It's called Tealicious. And uh, this is pretty close to that over this gold. All right, so we're gonna let these dry up. We'll come back and take a look and uh, we'll probably do two coats at least. We'll see what we got from there. So we'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, welcome back. Coat number one is totally dry, and I'm actually really digging how that looks. So this is over the black uh, silver, and this is over the white silver. 
and then over the black gold base and then over the white the gold so I really like how that looks I'm gonna do one more coat just to try to even it out a little bit there's a little few spots you can kind of see the gold through but that's all I want to do is just even that out um, and again it kind of points towards really thinning out in terms of the concentration of, of being able to build up because if you go too heavy with this you're just going to kind of wash out that metallic anodized look so uh two coats going to do it we're going to let this dry up and then uh, when we're done we'll see you guys after it's dry same thing just nice medium wet even more concerned about keeping my color consistent, just kind of that medium wet shine over the surface. That's exactly how I want it to look. Again, I think it's pretty cool. It's a very stark difference you can see over first the gold versus the silver especially with this blue very cool that'll do it we're gonna let these dry up and uh, we'll see you in a few minutes all right everyone welcome back everything's totally dry completely done uh, you guys can see the anodized candy in front of me and I have the, the raw the uncandied versions of those the quicksilver and the gold over here and uh, the only thing really left to do to wrap this up is to top coat all these so we're gonna choose our 4053 our high gloss, our UVLS high gloss 4053, which is what we're going to put down over the quicksilver and the gold. Um, so I went ahead and I mixed that, I kind of pre-mixed it, 10% uh, of our 4011. Again, that is our go-to reducer, I can't stress that enough, and 10% and is kind of the general rule of thumb uh, across our entire paint line. So 10% 4011, let it sit for about 15 minutes, mix it up in my LPH 80, uh, ready to spray. It's a 1-2 with the E4 cap, it's a perfect gun to spray something like this size. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then uh, what we'll do for the anodized versions, um, we're going to go ahead and use a 2K, uh, 2K clear coat. The, the only reason that we're kind of recommending or leaning towards that for the application over candy is to prevent that, that bleeding. Um, so basically with the, the 4053 or even the or 4050, uh, we have noticed that sometimes it, it does have a tendency to create kind of a, a re-wet and it will kind of, the, the candy will bleed into that clear because it is kind of a similar material. So in order for like the, the end all be all in terms of stopping that bleeding, it's not so much that it doesn't have the same shine, but what happens is the candy kind of pulls in, it will kind of hinder the gloss a little bit. You can polish it, but really for that, that absolute bleed checker to stop that from happening, the, the 2K clear is kind of the ultimate for that. So we'll do these in 2K and we'll do these in the 4053. Because these are metallics, like our pearl colors, it doesn't, it's, you're not dealing with the, the dye, the bleeding issue. So that's going to be perfect over the top of these. So I'm going to get the booth running. We'll go ahead and spray these guys first, and then we'll spray the anodized version. So stick around. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, welcome back. We are ready to kind of wrap this up. This is the final segment, uh, just kind of the overview. I'll kind of go over a few things real quick. If you remember when we left off, we were doing our 4053 UVLS high gloss over the raw uh, chromes, right? So we did it over the quicksilver, we did it over the gold. So we have the gold, uh, I'm sorry, the quicksilver over black, 
and the Quicksilver over white. So it's a difference. It certainly is a difference. You know, it's not super, super in your face, but it's certainly a difference in the finish there. A little more smoky kind of a chrome. This is a little bit brighter. Um, and then we have it over the gold. So there's the gold over the gloss black, the high gloss black, and the high gloss white right here. Again, with the 4053 over the top. Two coats. Looks really good. Great gloss level. Really nice and clean. Uh, so then we'll put these aside here, and we'll move on to our anodized candy. So we, these, remember, we did a 2K finish. We did a 2K clear coat over the top just because of the candies. You remember that. So this is the Quicksilver over high gloss white, and this is the Quicksilver over the high gloss black. Same exact thing, right? So we did silver over the two. Really cool look. Really kind of it really hits the nail on the head in terms of that anodized look. And remember, this was only two coats of the Carib Blue mixed at eight to one. So kind of extended out that, that mixing ratio because you kind of really want to let the, the Quicksilver uh, kind of be the star of the show. I really want to let that metallic or that really that chrome look shine through. And you just kind of want to tint it. You don't want to mute it. If you spray too much candy really fast, it's just going to look like our regular Carib Blue over silver, essentially. So you'd be really wary on, on your mixing ratios and how you apply it. And then we have the same exact, that's Carib Blue over the gold, right? So we did the gold over black, the high gloss black, we did gold over the high gloss white, and then we did two coats of Cara Blue over that. So again, pretty big contrast in terms of the color, right? This is a lot more like the teal because of that gold. So yellow and blue make uh, gold, right? <laughs> so uh, green. Uh, so this is a, a cool effect, really cool. Same thing, you can see through it. Uh, it's the key of, of kind of creating that metal, that anodized effect. So. Really cool. Uh, again, the 4053 over these guys and 2K over that. And if you remember, uh, the only reason we recommended a 2K over this is to kind of stop that candy bleeding. So for the candies and, and your spraying candy, that's kind of the end all be all, where everything else across the board, all of our colors, um, from our Wicked's all the way up to uh, our, our FET colors, the Hot Rod Sparkles, the Cosmics, all that, um, the 4053 works phenomenal. So. Uh, I think that wraps this up. Um, one thing I just want to touch on real quick when you're spraying, I mentioned it earlier. I just want to give a kind of few tips. Again, the star of this video is, is the high gloss white and the high gloss black. Um, much easier to use if you're familiar with our old version of the high gloss black. It's a little more forgiving. It's very easy to spray, especially on larger areas. Uh, you don't have to dry spray it as much. You could put it on medium wet, just like you would spray a clear coat. Um, if you are going to spray, uh, and this is a, a big thing. Mix what you want to spray for that particular moment. Um, kind of like a, essentially like a, a clear coat. You know, you, you wouldn't put it down and come back a couple hours later and spray the same clear coat that you mixed. Not that this is going to be catalyzed. It doesn't really get hard per se, but we have noticed the longer you let it sit with the, the reducer, right? Once it's, it's reduced, the shine will kind of come down a little bit the longer it has to say. So basically, if you're going to spray what you're going to spray that day, right? So like a six to eight hour kind of time frame, mix it that day. If you put it down and let it sit overnight and come back tomorrow and continue on spraying, you, you might notice that there is a loss in the gloss level. So, so just kind of keep that in mind, food for thought, right? So, so what you're going to spray at that particular moment, mix that and, and use that. It's not that it goes bad, like I said, but through things that we've done in projects, I have noticed that there's a little bit of loss of gloss if you let it sit overnight or like the next day or especially two days. So just food for thought for that. And if you are going to polish, if there is a necessity to polish these, your, your ground coat, because again, remember when spraying, either the, the Quicksilver or the Gold, you really want a nice smooth surface. So the less orange peel, the less kind of, um, any kind of surface imperfection you have, the better this final look is gonna be just because it is that reflective. It's kind of picture like you're trying to create a mirror, right? So you want a nice crisp, flat kind of a reflection. Um, dry sand, the 4050, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the gloss black, and the gloss white. Do not wet sand them because you kind of run the risk of kind of a re-wet issue. So dry sand it if you do have to polish it and try to keep it just to the point where you're spot nibbing, you know, just kind of surface imperfection relief. And, and remember when you're spraying that, you kind of want to spray it again like you would the clear coat, nice and even. Um, if, if you're a little wetter here and a little drier here, you will see that as it dries, right? So it's where it's wet, it might kind of flow out too much to the point where it could cause kind of a solvent pop, like we talked about too, an over application of our, our UVLS products. You don't want to just hammer them really on. You just want a nice medium wet and it's going to flow and level on its own. Uh, but don't dry spray it either because it's not going to 
basically acclimate. So if you have dry spray, it's going to kind of just continue to stack, kind of like a, if you're spraying a metallic, you know, you kind of start creating a fuzzy look. So really imperative to be really kind of exacting with your overlap. 50% overlap, nice and even, medium wet, and uh, let the, each coat really dry thoroughly between coats. And that goes with all of our paints. So uh, I think that wraps this one up. A lot of information, I know, but uh, again, really cool effects you guys can create uh, with, with our high gloss and our high gloss uh, white and black and our uh, Quicksilver and our gold products and our 4053. So for Createx Colors, I'm Chris Arpin. Thanks for checking us out and we'll see you guys next time.